Where's my snare? I have no snare in my headphones. There you go. What? <laughs> do you know what that's from? I do not. I do not. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um, Is that I, from uh, Drumline? No, it's not from Drumline. Okay. All right. If y'all are listening, I know a lot of y'all know where that's from. So, uh, somebody DM us, tweet us. Not even DM. Just comment on the post when I post the fact that I posted this episode. And tell me, what tell Tara what that's from. Because Tara know. doesn't know what that's from. I have no clue. It's only one of the most iconic intros in hip-hop history ever. Oh, it's from a song. Yeah. Hmm. That's your only clue. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, here we are. We're back again. Tara, act like she don't want to start the show. I got to do all the work to, like, start the show. Yeah. Once I press record, she just sits there and do. doesn't Tara talk. That's true. You finna get fired. Are you gonna fire me? Or I'm gonna change the name of the show. Oh, okay. Something. I, was gonna say, I know you ain't finna find somebody else named Tara and be like, hey, you wanna do this podcast? I know several people named Tara mm. who would love to be on this you podcast. Better not. I don't feel like redesigning the, the artwork, so. Okay. You say for now. Good. So, would you care to tell everybody what they're listening to or? This is Tara Talks. Ryan listens. Thank you. Welcome back. Episode 16. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Shout out to everyone who hit us up recently saying that they're just now listening in or that they're playing catch up. 16 consecutive weeks. We appreciate we you. This has been consecutive, right? It has. Week, man. I'm proud of us. I am, too. I am. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess let's go ahead and get the show started. All right. So this month is uh, May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month. If you did not know, now you know. And so last week we talked about counseling and therapy and why we go to counseling uh, both individually and together. And um, we're super excited because we're at some point going to go to premarital counseling officially. But, you know, also sometimes you just got to go to therapy. I literally last week was feeling so stressed out with just work stuff and family stuff and just life in general. I um, emailed my therapist and was like, hey girl, what's good? (laughs) You free, you busy, you miss me, you think about me. Um, And so hopefully we can get that scheduled soon because it is so necessary. It is so necessary. I really like one of my biggest goals is to just dispel the myth and, you know, get rid of the stigma of counseling. And like we talked about last week, we are not mental health counselors. We're not mental health professionals. We, um, you know, are just two kids with calm degrees. And so we, we are advocates. We partici- yeah, advocates, because we participate. We believe in it. Um, we wouldn't if we we would not talk about it if we didn't believe in it. We wouldn't be trying to share it with y'all and convince y'all if we ourselves didn't believe that it has a purpose. Exactly. And so that's just kind of our thing. Um, just want to say again, shout out to our friend Kendra, who is a mental health professional. And she started a Facebook page recently. It's called Kendra's Mental Health Moment, a safe place. And so. That's K-E-N-D-R-A. And so Kendra, man, she drops that knowledge and she just gives you little nuggets that you need to remember why taking care of your mental health is just as important, if not more important. I hate when people say nuggets. I love it. I love little nuggets. Uh, It's just as important (laughs) as taking care of your physical health. Um, And they are definitely related and so if one's lacking you can feel it in the other like literally when i'm stressed out i feel myself like starting to get sick so that is something that's rough because you stay sick i know i stay stressed so anywho we're going to talk like i said last week we talked about counseling and why we go to counseling this week we're going to focus a little bit more on self-care yeah so consider this a part two or the remix maybe i don't know yeah and so um it's interesting because self-care is a trend that's kind of popping up now where you hear people talking about self-care is not selfish because you need that reminder because sometimes you feel like if you do something for yourself then that's being selfish and i feel like we are kind of trained to that to kind of be like everything for everyone else 
and give so much of yourself, whether you are a mom that's putting your your husband and your kids above yourself and always doing for them and putting yourself last, or if you are, you know, in college and you're super involved and you're president of this and vice president of that and co-chair of this and co-chair of that and you just always got to do, 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 give, 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 volunteer, give back and you forget to like actually take care of yourself or, you know, whatever your situation is, that is kind of seen as, um, what's the word? It's almost seen like, you know, the whole saying of like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, that I used never to be liked one, that saying. That used to be one of my favorite phrases. I used to be like, I'll take a nap when I'm 40 and I'll sleep when I'm dead. But then I realized, okay, no, you actually need to like take care of yourself. Then I realized I'm like about to out. be dead if I don't chill exactly. out. Exactly. If, if you really say, my- I'll sleep when I'm dead, you, you are going to be dead sooner than you should be because you burn yourself out. Right. I was like at the point where I was getting to, the, I was already at the point where I was like, I need to sit down somewhere because I can't continue like this without ruining something i don't know what it's gonna be i'm gonna ruin something if i don't sit down and it's just this whole thing about me trying to i don't know i guess i'm like trying to impress everybody and trying to act like i'm invincible but uh it's not the case like you gotta sit down sometime just chill out i just thought of mm, i just thought of one of the biggest ways you can practice self-care what's that so we okay so let me might as well just dive into it so uh we are going to go over our i guess top whatever i was gonna say top 10 but i don't think i got to 10 but our um no i didn't (laughs) our our kind of top self-care practices or ways that we try to implement self-care into our lives and man i just thought of the number one one what's that saying no Ooh, that's such a good one. You got to say no. And that was hard for me. So it, important. It is still a bit of a challenge. And um, so for years, like I just not saying I wasn't really a people pleaser, but I just always wanted to like be there for people. And if somebody asked me to do something, I wanted to do it. And so, yeah, I would just I had a hard time saying no. Then once I realized how to say no, now I'm trying to learn how to say no without making up a reason. Yeah, because you always, I know always follows some, uh, it's People, always followed by, oh, I have to do X, Y, and Z and I can't, yes. I'm not available. You just got to be like, nah, fam. People look at you crazy when you just say no. You, they want you to say, so say for instance, if somebody invites me out for happy hour, that sounds fun, right? I wouldn't want to miss that. You would think. But sometimes if you really are like not in the right headspace for it, or if it's the group of people that you know, they're about to like annoy the crap out of you and just like be super negative. You, you sometimes you just got to say no. And you, you don't always have to say, oh no, I can't make it. Cause I have to do X, Y, and Z. Like you don't always have to have something else. It could literally just be, no, I'm not gonna be able to make that. Or no, I'm not going to be able to do that. And and my new favorite thing to do is to say no to something that I don't want to do and come home and watch Grey's Anatomy. You and Grey's Anatomy. Uh, Shonda Rhimes, if you're listening, please. Give me some money. Please give Tara some money. Please sponsor her to do something. Like oh somebody, somebody, please just make a, a class about Grey's Anatomy. I will pass every test. Anyway, the point is, I just use that as an example. It's not always Grace, but the point is, like, just do something for me or something I would rather do. Mm-hmm. It could, it could literally be. I'm actually about to go to my grandma's house and sit on her couch and watch Andy Griffith. Yeah. It, it could be that it, it doesn't have to be like oh i have 13 other appointments and so saying no is a hard one no is a f- complete sentence yeah it is. no is a complete sentence and that goes for like when people try to rob you of your time when people try to rob you of your joy when people try to you know and it's so funny because other people will quickly in a hurry not do something you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i just find that so funny the same the same people i have a hard time saying no to they don't have a problem saying no to me that's real and so i have to remind myself that of okay and I, it's not it's absolutely no shade none to that to those people like people are allowed to we're telling you to say no. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> people we're are not allowed to i'm not judging we're not upset Mm-mm. But I seriously had to remind myself, okay, this particular friend will prioritize whatever she needs to do over whatever I want her to do with me. So then when I when she asked me to do something, I don't need I 
don't have to feel guilty if I can't do it. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And again, there's no shade. It's just a matter of you can't do it all. You, you cannot do it all. You can't be everything to everyone. And I am I'm kind of bad about that. So when I was in high school, I was very involved middle. I would say elementary, middle and high school, but particularly middle and high school, obviously, because uh, that's when you start having like clubs and organizations and things like that. And I just was in everything. Mm-hmm. Band, student council, newspaper, uh, broadcast journalism, broadcast journalism. Um, one of the main reporters. What is that other thing called? Oh, NHS and then Key Club. Like, what is Key Club? Like, <laughs> why was I, I in Key Club? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I never like, figured out what Key Club. Was. I never figured out what Key Club was, but I was All in it because I had the shirt. It. I remember it was yellow. Yeah, it was. like I just you. Ah, I was in everything, and that's just the bare minimum. I mean, I could list another ten things. And same thing in college. I get to college, and I'm a go getter. I'm an overachiever. Um, when you're one of the very few black kids at a PWI, next thing you know, you BSA president. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I just not then, you know, join a sorority, got to be president of that. Cause again, at a PWI, it's not that many of us. So somebody, but everybody gonna have a position. And, um, you know, it's just, whoo, it's exhausting. Literally, I'm exhausted just thinking back of it. SGA, um, yeah some of everything so said all that to say i was so overly involved in high school middle really middle high school and college school right just school i don't know why i'm trying to say separate it so then when i was in my early to mid 20s i kind of like tried to take a step back and really didn't do much um early 20s wasn't really that committed to a church mostly because there weren't good churches in the area anyway moved to an area found a good church but was like i'm not gonna get involved i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna be a member and uh stuff in the community people ask me to do well you know and then eventually okay i was like you know what i've taken some time took a little break it's time to get back involved and now now i'm involved in so much y'all so much to the point that I almost didn't start this podcast, but I love it. I'm so glad we in did. In fact, that's what took us so long to it start is. this podcast. Again, we used to be on the radio here in the region where we live. And once we stopped, it was everybody's was like, an, are you going to do a podcast next? Are you going to go break. to the other radio station? We we're like, uh, now nah, we're going to chill for a little bit because it was a lot. Because mental health because and self-care. Mental health. So we needed that break. So yeah, learning how to say no is important. And it's so ironic and funny because literally this past weekend, somebody just asked me to join something else. And I was like, give me a minute. It's a thing that I joined, like paid my dues for, got the member, got the little membership info and all of that, but have yet to actually participate. Like I have received very little follow-up communication and like somebody tried to basically nominate me for a position and i haven't heard much afterwards about it and i'm not gonna go chase the information i'm just gonna wait until they actually call me and the say hey is, can you though, show up to this and then i'll see how i feel frankly. the thing is though i i sometimes i envy people who just go to work and go home and aren't like super involved in everything like we are but i just know that's my personality like it has nothing to do with school i'm i, I mean that's just who I am. I enjoy it. Anyway, we got so sidetracked. Yeah, we did. Um, and I could do a whole another episode on why you should join a ministry at your church. But um, back to self-care practices. So like I said, the first one and the biggest one is just learning how to say no, which I think is a struggle for most people, um, unless you're just like rude. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to like be nice so you want to say yes but sometimes you gotta say no for yourself um okay so my first one is yoga i started doing yoga in middle school i think like eighth grade something like that and i'm just gonna be real with y'all i have friends who do yoga and they post like all their yoga poses on instagram and i just am like wow look at you Meanwhile, I've been doing beginner yoga since eighth grade. (laughs) I still can't do like all the advanced poses. And I'm just like, so you've been doing this how long and you still doing the, but okay. Yeah, I I guess it's because I don't. Yeah, exactly. Because it makes me happy. I do yoga. um, 
one lady that I used to take yoga from was very big on emphasizing the fact that yoga is a practice, meaning literally, I don't care how long you've been doing yoga, you're practicing it every day, every time you do it. And so I really miss her because that was like when I finally, I feel like I made the most advances with her. <laughs> anyway, the point is, then I went back to remedial yoga. Um, the point is, I don't do it to try to like learn all the fancy poses and the headstands and all of that. Now, I guess perhaps one day in life I might work up to that, but I do it more so for therapy. It's very like relaxing and I love yoga. I actually miss yoga. I've been on a bar kick lately and so I haven't been doing my yoga like I used to, but explain what bar is. Bar is a combination of Pilates, yoga, and ballet bar and that's spelled b-a-r-r-e yes and because honestly, if you hear that you know you would just take it as oh she's been at the bar right drinking no, it's a and workout, not doing yoga it's a so, workout just, class. so just to clarify so it's kind of like mostly i would say it's predominantly pilates moves i mean obviously it depends on who's teaching it but like the only yoga part is like probably the last five or ten minutes of class you might do some some relaxing stretches and stuff but yeah and then there's some cardio in it too um and some light weight lifting but anyway point is i haven't done yoga in a while and if you're looking for a good yoga practice i highly recommend yoga with adrian and it's on youtube it's free and she has a good 30 days of yoga practice that i love and she just has a really calming voice and i just love her Anyway, so yoga's want massages. I need a massage right now. And when I say massage, I don't mean Ryan, no offense. You, I'm taking you give great massages, but I mean I, every now and then you need a professional massage. Hell, full I need body. One too. We need to go get a couple's massage. Like literally when we got engaged, I was like, Oh, that should be a like we should celebrate by getting a couple's massage. But I, agree. I kept forgetting to book it. But man, let me tell you, me and my best friend Michelle went and got a couple's massage one time. That was amazing. I don't know why getting a couple's massage with a friend is like fun for me. Like I also did it with my best friend Kia. Like Just be leaving me out of stuff, huh? You know, Sometimes it's needed for a girl's little moment. Um, also, Manny Petty. Um, more so petty than the Manny. I mean, obviously, I like keeping my nails done. But, like, literally, literally, I uh, chipped my nails. Like, just like, you know, when they start chipping and then you just can't stop. So, I like to keep my nails clear when possible. So, I'm not so much Manny. But the petty is so relaxing, uh, getting a pedicure. And I recommend that for women and men as well. And um, sometimes if you get that pedicure, especially like a deluxe or something, man, they kind of give you a little bit of massage in there too. So, it's just so relaxing. I took a break from getting pedicures after I had my ankle surgery and then just recently had my first pedicure like professional since then it was so relaxing it was so therapeutic i was like man i missed that so yeah that is a good one just a relaxing bath do you ever take baths usually during kickball season when i'm extremely sore and probably done pulled the uh pulled the hamstring i like throw some epsom salt in the tub and then just sit there for a while but that's usually the only time I do that. Isn't that so relaxing? It is, especially when you shower first and you're already clean. So that way you're not sitting in your own filth. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I feel about baths, by the way. So I grew up taking baths because my I did too when I was a kid. Yeah, because my mom was really big into like actually taking baths. And so I was that weird, like probably 12, 14 year old having a Calgon moment take me away like literally you would have thought I was somebody's single parent like with two kids the way I was taking bubble baths like I would light the candles I would have me a good book I would have me some Maxwell playing in the background I used to be all into baths and then when I went to college you know it was just like I just switched to taking showers but or primarily showers versus primarily baths when I was younger but now I really want to get back into baths because they are so relaxing especially now like with bath bombs and things like that and like you said the Epsom salt is so relaxing um video games is next on my list can you believe that of course I did not grow up playing video games at all 
Well, I'll take that back. Every now and then, my uncle will let me borrow his Sega Genesis. And so I would play Mortal Kombat, but Mortal Kombat. And then like every now and then I would go to my cousin's house and play Donkey Kong or Mortal Kombat or something like that. Uh, Mario Karts. But I didn't grow up like very heavy into gaming like a lot of my peers. But you have gotten me into gaming. And now like I do enjoy it as a bit of relaxation. Now, granted, it's still limited to Mortal Kombat and like 2K or FIFA. But to be completely honest, I do the same thing. I, I literally will turn on Grand Theft Auto and just get in the car and drive around and shoot people and get out the car and fight people and take their money and then get on top of a building and just snipe people from a distance because I can't do that in real life when I get upset. Right. So I do it on the game to prevent myself from going to jail. That makes sense. You know, you I'm have to take it out on something. It's not necessarily healthy, <laughs> but it beats the hell out of doing it in real life. That's true. Because first of all, I don't like guns. First of all, Mm-mm. I hate guns. I don't. Mm-mm. Weapons of most most kinds of weapons I don't care for. So I can't do that in real life. I'm not a violent person. So me fighting somebody would ultimately result in me feeling sad again. So then that kind of defeats the purpose. So, yeah, um, video games are a perfect way to just take that anger out, um, especially getting on Mortal Kombat and trying to beat Shao Kahn. Man, finish him. And you can't because Shao Kahn be cheating because he's like way too powerful. So then you got to sit there and fight him over and over and over. And then you just get extremely mad and you finally beat him. And it's just like amazing. Yeah. You're on top of the world and all your problems have gone away. But carry on. Um, So I mentioned yoga earlier, but just like working out in general is a good way. Obviously, you know that working out gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy and happy people just don't kill their husbands. And so... I enjoy working out. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Before I work out, I'm like, like, I have to force myself to work out. I'm not one of those that's like, oh, yeah, I woke up at 4 a.m. and went to the gym. Like, no, I literally I'm trying to force myself to go to like 6 a.m. workout classes just because I don't have time to work out most days after work. But I don't enjoy working out. Now, then in the middle of the class, then I'm like, oh, this is good. This is fun. Then after I feel great. So working out is a good one. And right now I'm really into, like I said earlier, bar. And then also hip hop fusion is one of my favorite classes because you're literally just dancing, especially when it's a song I like. Like a lot of the songs the instructor plays are songs from college or high school. And so I'm just like getting my life anyway. Also, I really love spin. Um, I know a lot of people don't like spin class because your booty hurt on the bike. But after you go more than once, you get used to it and it doesn't really hurt anymore. Or at least that's my experience. But I really enjoy spin as well. I'm not quite sure why, but I do. Um, a lot of people I know don't like spin, but I love it. So those are my favorites. And then um, cleaning. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm just going to be honest. I really hate cleaning. Like if I could hire someone to full time every day clean my house, I would. Um, It's not my ministry. It never has been. It's one of those things that I got in trouble for as a kid and just never grew into. Now I can clean and I will, especially if companies coming over. But it's uh, not my like favorite thing to do. You know, some people are like neat freaks. That's not me. Um, But cleaning and decluttering it does help you to relieve stress. It helps in terms of self-care because when your physical manifestation, like your your room or your house is a physical manifestation of what's going on in your mind. So if you're really stressed out, you probably got stuff thrown all over the house and you're just like scrambling to find things and it just adds more stress and drama to your life. And so whew, my lifelong mission is to find to declutter and to really find a home for everything in the house. So I'm not like frantically looking for stuff and, oh, where's this and where's that? It just adds more drama. And then the last self-care method that I personally use and love is meditation. Um, And some people don't like that word meditation. I don't know why, but literally all it means is just like being quiet. Like sit down somewhere and That's be quiet. Literally, what meditation? Sit is. down somewhere and be quiet. People don't like the word yoga. All it is is stretching. Yoga is stretching. Stretching and stuff. And breathing. Stretching, breathing. And then, meditation is sitting your tail down somewhere, focusing your thoughts and your mind. Like literally, clear your head. It's the it's the uh Christ, the, the Christians, not the Christian people, the the Christians. 
that think the word meditation has something to do with something other than God. Which and meditate on scripture. You can if, meditate I mean, on scripture. It's literally what you're thinking about. It's literally clearing Focusing your, your mind. thoughts, clearing your mind. But, you and know, yeah, some people are too deep. Um, so a couple of apps that I really love that help with meditation and deep breathing are the Calm app and headspace and obviously this is not ads for either of those if they want to sponsor a show hit me up um but both of those are really good in terms of like giving you guided breathing and like coaching you through like how to release your anxiety and so definitely recommend those um but again those are kind of my quick little self-care practices things that work for me things that i love definitely hit us up and share what works for you and what you love what you do for self-care but um like i said for me it's yoga massages mani pedi relaxing bath video games working out and cleaning or decluttering i need to read that marie kondo book so i can do the marie kondo method have you heard of that i have not she's the one that wrote that book um i think it's called the magical act of tidying up your life or something like that and she has a show on netflix that i need to start watching too but it's basically we should like take a piece mm. and if it doesn't bring you joy get rid of it that's real and so that's what i need to do is like go through and declutter some stuff and then um the last one meditation all right your turn yeah you know we probably should have done that like we probably should have taken turns because i know i thought about quite that you are minor similar halfway to yours. through it's okay but anyway um i'll be quick and i'll try not to explain each level of education that I've that I have like Tara did whoopsies so yeah um, my first one is going to be unplug simply is similar to the just say no thing quite frankly there are times when I leave work I come home and I sit down and I do nothing like sometimes I don't even turn the TV on I'm, I might play a game on my phone I might read something I might just go to sleep Sometimes that's all I need to do is just sit there and do nothing because quite frankly, Tara and I are both very similar in terms of the fact we were always involved in everything all through high school, all through college and especially in college. I felt like I was, I felt like I had to be a part of everything because all my friends were. So I was just like trying to do everything because I was definitely one of those people who said I was sleep when I'm dead. The only thing is I knew a little bit better. So I was like, I'll take a nap when I'm 40 and sleep when I'm dead. But that's, again, not it's a cool thing to say, but in in theory, it's not the best idea. So, yeah, sometimes I'm just like sometimes I won't answer my phone. I put it on airplane mode. I'll put it on do not disturb and won't take calls, won't look at emails, won't do anything. But just it's just me time. Just sit there, do nothing. So that's probably my favorite one. Well, no, I take that back. My favorite one, and this is going to sound weird to most people, but when I'm stressed out and depressed and sad and bummed out, whatever the case is, I listen to music that is equally depressive. <laughs> you just like to like delve into it. I See, here's my thing. When I get into those types of moods, I would rather sit in it for a while and deal with it because the best part about listening to music that's depressive and, you know, dark, I guess is the fact that you are not the only one going through it. In fact, there are people writing songs about it mm. and there are other people listening to those same songs feeling the same way that you're feeling. So it kind of normalizes it. It's just like, yes, there are going to be days that are terrible. There's going to be days that are worse than other days. There are going to be days that are better than other days. But the thing is, like when you sit there in all of your, you know, just sit in that mood, whatever's got you in that mood, just sit there in it sometimes so that you know how to get out of it because if you don't if you just try to stay away from it sometimes then you slip and fall into it and you don't know how to get out of it so i think it's equally as important to you know sort of not necessarily embrace it but to not run from it it's just like riding a bike if you learn how to ride a bike and you never fall you never learn how to get back up if you're a small child playing football you got to get tackled because you got to learn how to take that tackle. You got to learn how to take that hit. Otherwise, you'll, you know, be in college and you finally get tackled for the first time and you're just falling apart. You're done with that's the game for you. You're it. So. Playlist of that type of thing usually includes Fall Out Boy and old school weekend music, uh, like especially the first the trilogy edition of the weekend. Uh, yeah, that's that'll get you there. And it's kind of like 
I don't want to call it its own type of high, but you know, that, that moat, like the, the melodies and the beats and all of that kind of stuff. And the words are written a certain way to kind of, you know, create that feeling for you. So it's not just like you listening to something that's, you know, dark, it's constructed a certain way. It's, it's an, it's its own art, quite frankly. So, and it's an art that I enjoy. So a lot of times I just listen to that and just kind of, you know, get in my car and just ride around with the windows down, blasting the weekend and fallout boy and whoever else. And just kind of chill, deal with it. You know, the next thing, like Tara said, clean up. I, however, am trying my best to get to a minimalist lifestyle and it's not working so far. I got way too much stuff. Same. And I stay buying stuff. Same. And can't get rid of nothing. Truth. Like if you see the studio, I got way more stuff than I need to operate this podcast and to record music. Way more stuff. I got like one, two, three, four, four computers in here. And it's I legit need another one. And that's not even all the computers that's in the house. That's not even all the computers in the house. So <sighs> Yeah, um, there's times where I just get upset and just start cleaning up stuff. And the reason why this is such a good idea is because when you're stressed out about whatever else and it's out of your control, this is one thing that you can control. Your space. So get stuff out of your space, arrange your space, clean your space, you know, do something else with your space, because that's one thing you can't control. That's so true. So I like to. I guess go through my closet and see what I'm not wearing, what not what I'm what I'm not ever gonna wear again. Uh, throw it in a bag, take it down somewhere to somebody else where somebody else can use it, because there's no point in it sitting in my closet when somebody else might need it or have a better use for it. Because to be completely honest, I got way too many clothes. We've already me talked too. about how many shoes I got, and there's times where I'm like, let me get rid of some of these shoes that I'm not gonna wear. Because I mean, yes, it sounds cool to say I got like over sixty pairs of shoes, but I'm not gonna wear half of them anytime soon but uh yeah so it's it's always nice to get rid of stuff make space you know open up your space and just declutter get rid of things that are in your way and just you know clean things it's always a really it's a much better feeling once you do it It um i don't do this much but i used to sometimes when i was when i'd be feeling down or whatever stressed out i would run literally run from it you know change clothes and run until I'm too tired to be stressed and then get in the shower and go to sleep. And then you wake up feeling better because you get those endorphins from working out. And of course, you know, working out obviously does good things for your body. You're burning calories, you're feeling better, and it just kind of changes your mindset. Uh, and that's pretty much what most workouts, but running that cardio and tiring yourself out is has always been a really good way for me to kind of decompress. The next thing I like to do is uh, get online, specifically go to BuzzFeed and type in those faith in humanity restored articles where they just uh, you see a bunch of, you know, seemingly random acts of kindness from strangers and whatever else. They just talk about um, this random person bought ice cream for a whole soccer team just because he was at the ice cream truck at the same time they were. And all the kids are smiling and stuff. It's just stuff like that that kind of reminds you that the world is not as terrible as a place it seems. And, you know, there's still a lot of really good people in the world, even if the, all the people around you are just terrible and garbage and you need to get away from them. There's other people who are, you know, doing a lot of good for the world, a lot of good for their own communities. And you can be one of those people. I try to tell people this all the time. Um, and it's something that I practice and I'm not just preaching it. You do not have to be a multimillionaire to give back. Truth. You can literally start with what you have. Um, and I don't really like to talk about the things that I do, but when I can do something, I will. I absolutely will because I'm blessed and I know it. You know, I do not mind. I do not ever mind sharing what I have. You know, somebody needs something from me and it's like, hey, you got you X, Y, Z. Can I borrow this? Can I do this? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, because there's no point in me just being selfish about it. And then also, it's just like, that's also another really good feeling to like, you know, know that you made somebody else's day better. You know, just give that a shot because it's not always about you. Sometimes you got to do things for other people and, you know, just put a smile on somebody else's face. It's always a really good feeling. I promise. The next thing I think is my last thing. 
Oh, well, pretty much not necessarily just BuzzFeed, but, you know, get on Tumblr, uh, get on Pinterest and find those same types of articles and posts and stuff like that. But also find things that make you laugh. Go to YouTube, type in Alonzo Lerone, or just <laughs> even better, type in <laughs> get, get a dictionary. dictionary. <laughs> And you'll be doing exactly what Tara's doing right now. Just <sighs> laughing your behind off because dude is hilarious. <laughs> it's just funny because he, uh, what he's famous for is finding posts, well, not necessarily finding them, but people after a while started sending him posts from all over the internet where people spell things wrong. And with us being communication majors and grammar nerds. We live for it. I absolutely live for spelling errors. I point them out in menus. I point them out everywhere I see them. Uh, when we watch TV with the closed captions, I'm like, ooh, they spelled that wrong. They they didn't put a comma right there. I'm just, yeah. So that's always fun for me is pointing out those errors. Um, that I get a huge kick out of that. Um, several other things that you can do just to get online and make yourself laugh. And then probably my all-time favorite is write or create. Or, you know, because I'm somewhat of a writer, just like my fiance here. I can't believe I forgot that from my list. I can't either. Because that is definitely therapy for me. Yeah. Because when I was writing in. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to steal your moment. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm taking my moment. but <laughs> No, I just remember like when I was in college, one of the things I did is I wrote a relationship advice column. And um, then when I was about to graduate, I literally prayed and was like, God, just help me to still be able to write, but find someone to pay me. And then the company that paid me, it was literally like pennies per click. But I still, I guess I wasn't specific enough, um, but I still was getting paid, you know, <laughs> so it was cool. And then the more popular my articles were, the more I got paid. And then when that company closed down, I just kept writing um, for a different company for free just because I enjoy it. Like, yeah, I want to get paid <laughs> for my work, but I mean, journaling, blogging, I've just always been a writer and I just, it's definitely therapy for me. So for me, it's a little bit different. I like to write poetry. I like to write songs. I like to, uh, um, I want to say I want to write a book, but I don't have the patience to sit still that long. So that's probably not gonna happen. But um. I absolutely enjoy writing music. Uh, so there's a lot of times where I like write songs and have yet to actually record them or publish them and things like that. But, um, you know, you can just put all of your feelings and emotions and angers and stress and whatever else into a song. You know, um, when I get this other computer working, I can start back, you know, composing. I call it composing, making beats, producing. But the way I make beats, it sounds more like a composition rather than just a beat that I made because I'm a band geek. So um, I wish I still had an instrument to play. I've not really played an instrument since like I'm not even going to say when because it's going to make me sound old. As hell. I do, too. Like I used to play the French horn and that's just not the kind of thing that you like could pick up like i wish i had learned how to play the piano because i feel like you could just have a piano in your house and play the piano whenever i was legit from the buy a keyboard not so long ago and i probably still am but uh i played the tuba and of course name name if you know somebody with a tuba in their house just right. for the because of it please right. introduce me because everybody i know who played tuba ever does not have a tuba at their house just just for the hell of it so yeah i feel like guitar and piano you could just like continue. and even guitar sex, trumpet trombone maybe? i played trombone in yeah, jazz trumpet, band yeah um, i was i saw a trombone on i think facebook marketplace not too long ago and i was so tempted to buy it mm -mm. but i was like i don't have anywhere to go and play you gonna be the grandpa so. from a cosby show yeah and i'm fine with that sometimes it's just a matter of being in a creative space and enjoying your creativity and your talent because a lot of times you don't always get to use it the same way you used to use it but you know if you did it you know when you were younger and it brought you joy it'll bring you that same joy if you get the True. opportunity to do it again so yeah be creative play some instruments write some songs um hell write a screenplay write a stage play you know it might take you a while but it's something that you can work on and use it as an escape from reality sometimes you know, it's a positive coping method, but and it could eventually, you know, lead to big opportunities. Yeah. J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter when like after she was like so depressed and lost her job and like was going through a bunch of other stuff. So you really never know where your therapy and something you think you're just doing for yourself, where it could lead you. 
And that pretty much wraps up, right? That I would absolutely say wraps it up. Okay, that wraps up our self care segment. This is oh what wait we wait enjoy. I skipped something shopping. Oh, you did skip that. This is probably like not the best idea, especially if retail money therapy. is retail therapy, especially if money is part of your issue. Um, I'm so quick to go to TJ Maxx and Best Buy and Marshalls and Target and Guitar Center and wherever else and just look at stuff. I tell myself I'm just like okay I'm just gonna go see what shipments they got in what else what else, what they got in here or I'll sit there and get on Amazon and just look at stuff that I might buy next week you know it's not a healthy thing necessarily because I could be saving a lot more money but I do budget to like spend money that way so I'm not just like blowing all of it and then being hungry like two weeks after payday because I didn't save any money and didn't budget properly but uh yeah acquiring new things can absolutely be you know fun can take your mind off of stuff because a lot of times if you're just stuck in a routine in life then there's times where you want to uh you know get something different do something different have something different so a lot of times a new toy basically can kind of take your mind away from things and you know i i do it all the time sometimes it's buying a new video game sometimes it's buying a new microphone sometimes it's buying a new camera lens Sometimes it's buying a new phone case. It can be that simple. It can be that simple. A new shirt, you know. Yeah, literally, like, I've just found, I literally bought a $4 shirt at Walmart last night. And when I tell you, I've gotten so many compliments on this shirt today. <laughs> like, I, and it made me happy. And it's just something like, oh, flowers, I, that, that made me happy. Like, and it doesn't have to be super expensive. So, yeah, it could be shopping or it could be window shopping. And just, like, I walk in Target and I don't know what they what kind of oxygen they piping in, but I just feel better just walking into Target. I can literally walk out and not buy anything. And sometimes it's a matter of getting out of your room. True. You know, it's just go somewhere else. Don't just, and like I said, sometimes I like to just sit in it, but then when I'm ready to get out of it, I go somewhere else, you know? So this is what we like to do for self-care. Hit us up and let us know what you enjoy doing. Um, we're on Twitter and Instagram at this is TTRL and just share your thoughts as well. And again, shout out to Kendra for Kendra's mental health moment, a safe place, which is on Facebook where you can get some more tips for self-care. So now we're going to move on to the next segment, which is just kind of news and current events and what's going on on my timeline and so for this, uh, I want to talk about two things that we saw over the weekend. And the first one being Aladdin. Aladdin was a really good movie. Aladdin was so good. Tara sent me the message and was like, we need to go see Aladdin. I was like, OK. It was so good. And I've watched Aladdin, the cartoon uh, series growing up. Usually it came on in the mornings when I was getting ready to, for kindergarten and first grade back in the day. And that was my only real knowledge of Aladdin. I think I've seen the movie a couple of times at somebody else's house, but I wasn't really big into like all of the Disney movies and stuff. Lion King was obviously my favorite. Uh, Mulan was probably second. And then whatever else I remember, frankly, but yeah, um, that movie was great. Go, you need to go see it. Aladdin was so good. So Aladdin came out in 1992 originally. And so I was four and I remember having an Aladdin birthday party. I don't remember if it was my fourth or fifth or sixth birthday, but it was one of those. And it was pretty dope. Let me tell you, if my mom can do nothing else, she could throw a party and, uh, and maintain a theme because I very specifically remember that theme uh, of that party and everything was Aladdin. Um, and I just want to say the current release of the uh, live action version of Aladdin, they did a really great job. I think they did a good job of like maintaining a lot of the stuff from the 1992 version, but also updating it uh, ever so slightly. And also, you know, kind of making it appropriate for the live action versus cartoon. And I mean, big shout out to Will Smith. Of course, Will Smith is Will Smith. So he did what he does which is be amazing and i just think he was an amazing genie he he didn't take away from or try to compete with or I, I don't feel like he compared himself to the robin williams version but he did a great job of like paying homage to it but also making it his own in, right. in my opinion i would agree so it was great another thing i liked about it is the fact that the main characters now obviously i didn't go through and search everybody's ethnicity but the main characters were 
from the Middle East. Obviously, uh, Will Smith is black, but he was a brown person and he was blue in some parts and brown in some parts. But um, the person who played Aladdin is from Egypt. The person who um, played Jasmine, India, person who played uh, Dahlia, which was like one, another one of the main characters, um, Iranian. So it was just kind of like, I personally thought that was great to not be like, oh, let's have all these white people play the roles of these obviously brown people in the desert so right but yeah so i always appreciate when you know you kind of get the ethnicities of a place of a movie of a setting you right get the, ethnicities the setting right of the setting yeah. where it only makes i mean the setting it only makes sense what was that one movie about egypt where everybody was white i don't remember but i'm still mad about it yeah it's just like how would why would like how why egypt is in Africa. Right. People forget just because it's Northern Africa. That right. It's still, it's still Africa. Africa. And even the people in Northern Africa who aren't necessarily, who don't necessarily look black, they're still not white. Right. You know, so it's like if I made a movie about Norway and casted all black people. That wouldn't be accurate. It wouldn't, it wouldn't would make be upset. sense. It would not people make any sense. People were upset when they were trying to cast uh, my boy. Uh, what's your boy? <sighs> I have no clue. Like, I don't know where to start guessing. And James Bond. Oh, Hedris Elba. Hedris Elba. <laughs> when they were trying to cast Idris Elba as James Bond, they were like, he's not black. Why not? Why can't he be? Um, it's a fictional character. You can make him whatever exactly. you want. Exactly. But uh, let me tell you one thing, though. And there are black people in Europe. Let me tell you one thing, though. When they do that live action Mulan, I still need Eddie Murphy to be Mushu. I don't care what nobody say. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to find a way to make Eddie Murphy a tiny dragon. I just. Yeah, make it happen. It can, it can happen. Make it happen. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was good. That was fun for me. I enjoy going to the movies. Like, I, that's one of, our, one of my favorite of our date nights is just to, like, go see a movie. Because I just love movies. Um, and also, certain movies I want to see in theater. Yeah. So, some I can wait till they come on netflix and then the thing about james bond is like you have to cast james bond as a character and not a specific person because you gotta like somebody has to fit the description of james bond and it's like you can put another white person there but if he's not like that a handsome smooth yeah. dap dapper debonair suave like athletic you know fit kind of person then it's not gonna make sense if you just put like a you know and it just ever fits that description he does but then again, if it's, you know, a fictional character that's not based on history, then go for it. But at the same time, I'm not going to make a movie about how Russia was founded and fill it up with black people. That wouldn't make sense. So the other thing we watched this weekend was the All in the Family and the Jeffersons live remake. I don't know what you call it. Um, it's sort of a reboot. Not yeah. necessarily a reboot, but yeah. it was more like a tribute. Yeah, Let's call it a I don't tribute. know. Anyway, point is, um, they did they did a, a new version of All in the Family. Literally one episode of All in the Family and one episode of the Jeffersons, and I thought it was good. I thought they did a really good job. Norman Lear is what ninety six. Ninety six. He came out. Man, he's done some big stuff for TV. And I'm sorry, like. Norman Lear is TV. He is. I mean, seriously, if you really think about it, you got On the Family, The Jeffersons, Maud, and times. then there's Maud. Good times. What else did there's he like do? There's like at least seven. Yeah, more. there's so many shows. And and here's what I love. Were the Golden Girls too? I wanna say, but I don't know for sure. Here's one thing um that I love about Norman Lear shows. He wasn't afraid to touch on tough topics like the stuff that people were really talking about but were afraid to talk about he wasn't afraid to do it all in the family 704 hauser good times mod one day at a time the jefferson sanford and son archie bunker archie bunker's place fernwood two night all that glitters all's fair sunday dinner aka pablo america two night the deputy the facts of life facts of life Live in the studio, audience is what we're talking about now. Uh, guess who died? The Nancy Walker Show, Apple Pie, Mr. Dugan, uh, Channel Umpty Three. In the beginning, America divided. Wait, that's since 2016. That's new. Yeah, he he he's did, still working. Yeah, he's still working. Um, so normally I do a lot of, of good shows, and so you know, again, like him or or not, 
I, I grew up watching All in the Family, The Jeffersons, Maud, Good Times, and Facts of Life. And All in the Family did a really good job of talking about race, um, talking about homosexuality, talking about religion, politics, uh, feminism, like so many tough topics. And and then it had an art to be funny too. Right. So anyway, I really loved it. Um, my favorite part, honestly, of all of it was from All in the Family was the intro where uh was it Woody Harrelson and um what's my girl? Oh, Man, I, don't, I don't know. I was I literally thinking of her was. name this morning. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy. Uh it starts with an M. Yeah, it does. Just assuming. I don't know. Sorry, Marissa no, Tomei. Her. That's her name. Oh, okay. My mom was talking to me earlier and she was talking about how she watched it too. I was like, we're probably going to talk about it on the podcast. Oh yeah. I need to figure out what your mom thought about it. Cause she was trying to talk to us about it. And I was like, wait till after we watch it. But, um, so the live remake of all in the family, my favorite part was when Woody Harrelson and Marissa Tomei actually sang the song. That's that intro for, uh, Edie, uh, Edith bunker and, uh, Archie. And I just thought they did a really great job. You know, they hit those little crazy, awkward notes. Um, I love that this, the show, the episode that they chose to do um, was episode season four, episode six. And so it's an episode that talks about kind of, again, like I said, a lot of those hot topics that I just mentioned, but specifically race. And a lot of those quotes from that, like they didn't change any of the script because we went back and watched the original episode too, because we're that big of nerds. And like, it was literally still spot on. So I don't know. I really like that. And then my favorite part of the Jeffersons was when your fave came out. Man, hold up. Okay. So anybody who knows me knows that 227 is one of my top three favorite shows ever. And Marla Gibbs is one of my top favorite actresses ever. Like that's like she's one like she's the goat high key. And of course, they were recasting it to make everybody a little bit more modern. And it did such a great job with that. And I didn't even think I didn't even think about who was going to play her character. I did. I was really wondering who they were going to get to play her. Yeah. And they did such an amazing job with the casting. And then in walks the OG Florence herself, the OG Florence, the two remaining people from both of those shows, Norman Lear and Marla Gibbs. It was just really good to see both of them still alive and still working and doing well not just like you know hanging on by a thread they're both doing really I'm well sorry, but do you remember when sherman hemsley and wheezy did that old navy commercial <laughs> old navy old navy <laughs> i'm gonna have to look that up oh my gosh <laughs> i really need to get the video camera back in here because of how the face you, you just made like y'all I'm, I, let me apologize for not having video episodes sooner than i thought i would then i really thought i would be doing this more frequently but y'all needed to see our face just then dude that commercial i don't know why that old navy that old navy commercial took me out because i was like what i'm gonna look that up now yes um but anyway yes it it made me miss sherman uh and wheezy but yeah george and wheezy i guess (laughs) but but it was so great to see norman lear and uh i'm just yeah it was it was pretty amazing blanking on names anyway um yeah, no, and then Kerry Washington was great. Of yep. course, Jamie Foxx was hilarious. Jamie Foxx is Jamie Foxx. Anthony Anderson was great. Yeah. Um, but Woody Harrelson is always hilarious. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the casting was really great. Even like the characters that didn't look like their person they were playing, they took on their essence. Yeah. But I will say, I wish they had dyed Illy Kemper's hair. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, like, because um the daughter on dang now i'm blanking on her name the daughter on on the family was very vividly blonde like it wasn't even like a dirty blonde like her blonde it was like platinum blonde hair kind of like suzanne summers was on three's company like that i feel like was a big part of her character and they should have dyed her hair i'm sorry i didn't like the brown hair but other than that, they all did an amazing job. Um, that also reminded me I need to get back to watching Kimmy Schmidt. Unbreakable. 
dead giveaway. <laughs> but yeah, um, of course, shout out to Marla Gibbs. You know, I'm always talking about give people their flowers while they can still smell them. So this is me. Like, you know, I'm telling y'all right now. Marla Gibbs is Marla everything. Gibbs is one of my absolute all time favorites. And I've been saying that for the last decade at least. So, uh, yeah. And it's really good to see her still working. She's still, she literally is still getting work. She, uh, has a lot of different episodes of different TV yeah, shows she was in the just last three the, years. Uh, the Carmichael show. The Carmichael show, show yeah. yeah. And it's, of course, she's playing somebody's grandmama, but yeah. still, you know, she is really still out here work and still good. She's not just like, they just, it's not like, oh, let's get Marla Gibbs because right. to say we got Kinda Marla like Gibbs, Betty White, yeah. she's still funny. Just like Betty White. Yeah. They're still funny. So, yeah. Um, like I said, does that wrap that up? It does. It does, because it it's does. already a super long episode, and we need to move it on. Move it on, because... Obscure news. Obscure news. I got, like, four things. I'm going to start with the funniest one. I'm going to read this headline. This is the headline. Pastor arrested for selling tickets to heaven I'm to sorry. members for $500. What? A clergyman from Zimbabwe and his wife were arrested for selling tickets to heaven to church members. According to Egypt Today... The police discussed the pastor and his partner scammed several people into buying tickets for 500 bucks. Um, yeah. It was also added that people would, with the tickets, would get into heaven without facing judgments. Not without judgment. Yeah. So it's like. <laughs> so no can, judgment day. It's yeah. like uh, Disney, the fast pass. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think it works that way. No. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I didn't see that in my Bible. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. And there is a video, but I didn't watch the video. So, um, I guess if you didn't know, you can't buy a ticket to heaven. Nope. So, yeah, don't. Not literally or figuratively. Do not pay for a ticket to heaven. I mean, but let's be honest. If it were real, $500 ain't a bad deal. That's true. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, when I was growing up, squirrels were always uh, elusive and would always run away. You could never catch a squirrel. Right. You had to like set up some sort of clever trap. When I was in college at Prairie View, the squirrels would run up on you and snatch a bag of chips out of your hand. College squirrels are different. College squirrels are different. They just are. Are just a whole different, different breed. Yeah. Um, they would run up on you and like a little squirrel literally snatched a bag of chips out of my hand when I was in college. Like my freshman year, I was thinking the squirrel was going to run for me. So I didn't bother to like change my path of direction. It literally jumped up and knocked the chips out of my hand. And took off with the chips. I was like, wow, okay. But yeah. But um, apparently squirrels in Boston will snuggle up with subway passengers. What? Yeah, this squirrel um, scared some passengers, but then cuddled with others. Wow. A surprise passenger hits the ride on the on a Boston commuter trolley, frightening some people at first, but then warming their hearts when it willingly snuggled into a human passenger's mm -mm. arms. Commuters say a squirrel bonded onto a red line trial uh yeah bounded i guess bounded onto a red line trolley monday morning at an above ground stop prompting some passengers to hop onto their seats which is fair because you don't know where the squirrel been and squirrels might bite i don't know and we don't rabies? know what happens yeah we don't know if squirrels have rabies or not because squirrels usually run away from us but anyway um yeah the rodent was eventually let off by passengers at another above ground station. So that was interesting. Um, again, I'm not a huge animal person. Me either. But uh, I mean, sure. I guess that's cool. Uh, I'm not going to read this one yet. I'm going to wait. Read that. Look at that. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. But I'm going to read this headline. Man, weirded out. That someone broke into his home just to clean it. Honestly, I wish somebody would. I would welcome that. Don't steal nothing. But if you're coming to clean. Yeah, sure. I mean, by all means. Let me know where gonna, to Venmo you. Right. I'll, I will absolutely Venmo you. But yeah, nothing was missing. But the beds were made. The rugs were vacuumed. The toilets were scrubbed. That is weird. And there were origami roses. Now that's weird. On the toilet paper rolls. Like in a hotel. Yeah, or on a cruise. That's very Whoever weird. broke into a Massachusetts man home last week didn't take anything. They did, however, leave the house spotless. That's uh, so Nate funny. Roman tells the Boston Globe when he returned to his Marlboro home from work around May 15th, he could tell a stranger had been there. Nothing was missing, but the 44 noted that the bedroom, I just said all of that. I would probably move. I would not. Because that sounds like a stalker. 
I would uh, I would thank whoever that was. I just need you to leave like, a note, like, like explaining if you yourself. Get a rush from cleaning my place while I'm not there and not telling me that you did it. I'm gonna welcome. I wonder that if it was a friend. Gets, until it gets. What if too it was a weird. friend just trying to be nice and be like, "Oh, I noticed you've been stressed out lately, so I cleaned your yeah, house." you know, it could be leave one of those random acts of kindness I was talking about. But leave a note. Yeah, leave a note. You know, don't, don't, don't. You know, because then now I'm trying to, to figure out how you got in my house, right? Uh, I gotta change the locks, ask security. I want to, but if I have security well. and I can watch and be like, "Oh, they're just being nice," then I don't know. Yeah, I want to be able to sleep well in my freshly made bed with the, you know, everything or being nice and clean. Places. Yeah, but uh, he says he may have left his back door unlocked. Okay, and he thinks well. that perhaps <laughs> housekeeping service went to his home by mistake. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that, that's actually funny. That does that make changes it funny. everything. But that sucks for the person whose house they were supposed to go to. I mean, because they probably didn't get paid for that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna wrap it up for weird news. I'm trying to keep that quick so we can go ahead and uh, get into the listener letters. Go yes. ahead and pop that off. So remember, you can just email us at askttrl at gmail dot com. A s k t t r l at gmail dot com. We want to hear from you. We want to know if you got some work drama, some family drama, some relationship drama. If you are booed up, bidi da do boo boo boo. Then just hit us up. We are excited to kind of read your. You are such a dork. I am. Uh, we're excited to read your questions, and um, also if you just have random questions for us, that's fine too. Um, so our first question comes from Callie, who wants to know, "What do you do if you don't have time for self care?" You've got to make time. <laughs> that's a really great, that's great what question, Callie. Literally, is is making time for yourself. Man, it's hard to do though. It is. I will highly admit that it's very difficult to do. Um, you literally have to tell people no. You have to cancel some things sometimes. Um, there may be a really fun party that you've been waiting for, but you know you're not going to get to sleep in on Saturday morning. So go home and go to bed early. Skip the party. You've been to a party before, you know, and that could be your method of self-care. But at the same time, you know you want to sleep. Go get that sleep. I promise you sleep is a bit more valuable than going to a party. Man, you got to prioritize stuff. And the thing is... It's almost like you have to like make an appointment with yourself, kind of like you would if you were dating someone. So true. And you have to put it on your to-do list. Like literally in my planner, I try to put stuff like that on my to-do list, like get a massage. Like honestly, like even something like getting my hair done can be self-care and therapeutic. But sometimes like I talk myself out of it, like, oh, I could save that money and we're gonna save that money right we walk around looking crazy and be mad and then when i do book an appointment i'm like oh i feel so much better now like you know and the thing is like you have i hate when people say this but but you have the same 24 hours beyonce got like (laughs) uh, i keep i hate to keep going back to homecoming but seriously when you watch that it's a it's a it's a lesson because when you talk about just the parts where she was like okay i gotta go home to my 50 lemon kids like she has three kids a whole husband that apparently needs some attention and got all these dancers, backup singers, like think about all this stuff. And yet, and still, she still has to find time to take care of herself. And so again, not, not, I hate to, I hate that saying, of, Oh, you got the same 24 hours Beyonce. But the point is like, you make time for what you want to make time for. And you have to learn how to balance that out. And I'm, I'm bad at it. I'm preaching to myself just while I'm answering your question, because you know, I have to do that for myself as well. I have to find that balance because I can swing to the opposite pendulum and just literally get lazy and not do anything or overwork myself and be doing too much. And it's really more about that balance, finding that center of, okay, I did X, Y, and Z on my to-do list. So now I'm going to take a bubble bath or now I'm going to do some yoga, like finding that balance. So you just have to make time for it. You it is do. okay to skip things. It is okay to take a personal day from work. Ooh, preach. Cause I, I do that when I need to. Like my, my, my boss and my supervisor, they know 
that if I say I'm not coming in because I'm not feeling well, they know what I mean because they know that mental health is important. And we all know that. So there's times where you just got to not go to work sometime uh, or right, work from home, you know, bring have your laptop or whatever. I don't you know, whatever the case is, make it happen for yourself because nobody else is going to make it happen for you. Absolutely. So make time for yourself and your self-care, Callie. Our next question comes from Arizona. And the question is. <sighs> <laughs> Are you signing because I use Grey's Anatomy names? For the like third week in a row. That's what I'm watching right like now. Ninth can, and ninth week total, yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll switch to something else. I'm just saying there are other point. shows. Okay. <laughs> well, you can give me fake names next week. Please. Thank okay. You. So, Arizona said, what do you do if someone you know really needs counseling but won't get the help? Woo. Chile. <sighs> Woo, Chile. Uh, that's a good question. There are times when you need someone, I will be by your side. That's me quoting a song because I don't know what to say right here. Um, of course, you can't help people who don't want to be helped. So you really just got to, I guess, keep an eye on them. Remind them that there's better options. You know, a lot of people don't do better because they don't know any better. And you just got to let them know that there are more options. You, if They may be concerned about the stigma as well, which is, you know, fair. We haven't gotten collectively as a community to the point where that stigma has gone. But, I mean, let them know they can keep it anonymous and private. They don't have to talk about it. They don't have to be open about it like we are. <laughs> but, you know, it, it won't hurt. You know, a lot of times it might be um, an issue of access. They may be denying it because they don't have the money for it. They don't want to pay for it. Offer that, you know, offer to help pay, you know, if they have the insurance for the job, but they don't want to pay the out of pocket costs or the copay or whatever, then let them know that you're willing to, you know, contribute to that. Because it's like saying, can we go to McDonald's? You got some McDonald's money, have that McDonald's money so they can go see a therapist or a counselor, be their counselor. You know, don't just say, look, I'm going to help you with your mental health. Let them let them vent to you. Just kind of let them open up. Be do not ju do not be judgmental because that's going to only deter them further. But uh, sometimes you can just be the shoulder they cry on, uh, whatever the case is. Let them know that you're there for them and let them know that this is absolutely an option that they do not need to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. But um. I mean, find somebody auntie that they can talk to. It's sometimes as simple as listening to the OGs, like I always say, just somebody else who may have been through something similar, but talk to them, have somebody talk to them, listen to them more importantly, um, just whatever they will open up about, just do what you can until they're ready. Because again, you cannot, you cannot, you know, force somebody to do it because trying to force them is only going to make it worse. You can't help people that don't want to be helped. You cannot. Uh, what's the phrase about horses and water and drinking? You can lead that. someone to the water, lead the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So I will say two things. One is pray for them. There's like one, a couple people in particular that I can think of that I felt like really needed counseling, but didn't want to go for whatever reason. Um, I'm not sure if it was fear or access or just, you know, procrastination. And I just had come to a point where I just had to pray for them because I knew that it was more than I could do in terms of just listening as a friend that they did need like that extra professional help. And so I really did pray for them that they would go to counseling and be able to work through it. And they did like, don't you love when Sometimes that happens? Sometimes it's that simple. Yeah. Don't you love when that happens when you're like praying about something and then it happens? I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, the second thing that I would recommend is to talk about your experience. So for me, I'm kind of like, hey, this is what worked for me. Or, you know, and again, it's, that's kind of the whole like me talking about my counseling experience to dispel the myth, to get rid of the stigma and to just be like, hey. I was dealing with X, Y, and Z, and then I went to therapy and this is how it helped me. So for me to say, okay, hey, this is work for work for me. That's like literally if somebody has a six pack and they say, hey, I had 
three kale smoothies a day and I did 20 jumping jacks and then I got a six pack. I'm going to be like, wow, okay, that worked for you. Let me try that. I thought you were talking about a six pack of beer. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, I'm with you now. I'm here. But like when, when you see someone else get results and that you're like, okay, that worked for them, then sometimes you're willing to be like, okay, maybe I could do it. So that's kind of my advice is like just model that behavior and talk about what worked for you and what you've been trying and maybe they can maybe they can drink the water (laughs) i was trying (laughs) to stick with your horse analogy but yeah like hopefully they'll try counseling at some point so good luck with that arizona and hit us back up and let us know how that works and everyone else feel free to again as always send us questions to ask t ask ttrl at gmail.com asktrl at gmail.com you can always take your horse to the old town road oh and ride till you can't no more indeed So we're going to go ahead and wrap this week's show up with our love life advice of the week like we do every week. And so, again, this is for those of you who have a bay or need a bay or want a bay one day. And um, our tip for this week, well, my tip, I don't know, you might have something different, but my tip is don't expect your partner to make you happy. Hey. And the thing is, like, it's so crazy because, like, you between watching sitcoms and rom rom coms and all these like things, you really kind of build that unrealistic unrealistic expectation of like, I gotta find this other person to make me happy, and that is not it. You need that ain't it, chief. You need to be a whole and happy person in and of yourself. This is true, and. You know, if you are a Christian, then God and Jesus should bring you joy, which joy is an eternal state. And it's not like happy is an emotion that can change from one day to the next. But can't nobody take joy from you. Can't nobody take my joy. So I just think that's one thing that I really wish people would realize, like your partner is not really supposed to make you happy and so a lot of times you know like i said we're talking about um depression and anxiety and mental health and counseling and self-care and therapy and all those things and so a lot of times when you are dealing with depression or anxiety your partner feels helpless because they're like okay i don't know how to help you i don't know what to do like what did i do they start blaming themselves like what am i not good enough am i not enough for you that i can't make you happy and Sometimes that's not really it. Sometimes, like we talked about last week, it literally is a chemical imbalance in your brain or some outside stuff going on or some childhood trauma and something triggered this reaction. And so I just really kind of want people to realize that, like, while you may, I don't know how to word this, like, you may make me happy, but you don't make me happy. Yeah, like the happiness is not my sole responsibility. Right, that's it. There you go. But I shouldn't like I shouldn't take away from your happiness. Preach is where you're trying to go. Yeah, and I agree with that. You do in a relationship, you are still required to be a whole person. You cannot just throw yourself entirely into this other person because a relationship is two people. You know, like when you're trying to um, pick up a baby and they just go limp. Yeah, that, like <laughs> that's what it would be like it's, yeah. if you if your partner was solely responsible for making you happy. You do not want to be emotional dead weight. Ooh, and mm. nobody should have to carry emotional dead weight in a relationship. It's not healthy. It's not. So yeah, I'm really glad you said that. It's so real. Yeah, it is so real. Like, and honestly, like you have to. That's. I mean, that's one of the the best things about these self care things that we're talking about. I hope you guys don't take this lightly. We're not just saying like, oh, take a bubble bath and you'll feel better. Like, seriously, find whatever works for you. But it is so critical. Like, it is imperative. Like, it is crucial for you to take care of your own mental health and 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 especially when you're in a relationship like legit sometimes you just need your alone time right this is true sometimes i just need my alone time right yeah sometimes you need time with the fellas yeah sometimes i need times with the girls like this weekend i think 
I was downstairs. You were upstairs for like most of this weekend. Yes. Like we were texting each other in the we house. We were FaceTiming each other and texting each other in the same and house playing, upstairs and downstairs. Uh, playing the game pigeon games back and forth. Yeah. But we were not sitting by each other. We weren't in each other's faces. There's sometimes where you got to give each other that space. Space. Because you are still two whole humans and you were two whole humans individually before the relationship. And you cannot just throw away half your life to be with somebody. You do have to still maintain the things that make you happy as an individual because Tara can't always provide those things for me. Like Tara can't be a tuba for me to play mm. or a trombone or a piano. When I want to play music, she can't turn herself into an instrument. It's not her responsibility to do that for right, me. Right. I'm not the genie. Right. She's not the genie, you know. And I can't be her genie when because I do not know how to do massages the way she really needs them done. I can help. You're great. I'm OK. However, yeah. comma, sometimes like I can help you repaint your toenails, but I don't know how to do the yes, full pedicure. You, you know? were so sweet. You did my nails after uh, my ankle surgery. Yeah, I was I was helping out with as much as I could trying to, you know, and you rub my feet. Yes. Yeah. Once the doctor said it's okay. Anyway, the point is like, yeah, at the end of the day, sometimes you just need and and I'm I don't want people to take this as like uh Tara said, give me space. Right, exactly. I don't want this to be your out to stop spending time with your partner. But my point is you need balance. You need both. You need time together and time apart. And just remember that that, you know, for the person who I guess both sides of it. So remember for yourself, you can't rely on your partner to make you happy. And then remember for that partner, you're not responsible for making them happy. So it's both sides of it. Like you shouldn't bring them harm. You shouldn't add misery to their life, but you also are not like their only source of happiness. Exactly. Just a real quick shout out though. Like, I just want to say, I had a really long day at work today and had to work late. And so it was a long day, literally and figuratively. And as soon as I walk in the door, this young man beside me just already had some hot tea ready for me. I had a feeling she was going to want tea when she got home. That's just so thoughtful. That has nothing to do with any segment on the show. But I just had to say that publicly that that was so sweet because it's so weird that like some days it's like, oh, I need a glass of wine. But I've been on a hot tea, like a green tea kick lately. And he just had the tea ready for me. And we just had a little tea time and talked about our day. And so like had I not already had um, the don't expect your partner to make you happy thing picked out, that would have been my thing if it was just off the top of my head. So it was really sweet. Oh, well, I'm glad I was able to. Very intuitive. Yeah. And so that was a really sweet and thoughtful thing, but it wasn't like a. Like, I'm not required to make tea every time she comes home from a long day at work. Exactly. But I know when she's probably going to need it. It's just and I'm going to do things because I want her to be happy. So I'm going to contribute to her happiness. And it's not, I'm not going to take it on as my sole responsibility. Mm, that's, that's deep. I love because it. Because. I'm going to fail at that because I can't control. To, yeah, I can't control all of her circumstances mm. either. So that's the main thing you got to remember is that some things are out of your control. You can only do what you can and contribute and not take away from. True. So that's our quick tip. Love life advice of the week. And thanks again, everyone, for listening week after week. And again, thank you to everyone who is just now tuning in. Thank you to everyone who um, just started following us on Facebook. We finally created the Facebook group. Tara Talks Ryan Listens. I'm not sure why, but in the beginning, Ryan just made Twitter and Instagram. So we were just doing that. And then finally, I was like, oh, Facebook. So yeah. um, we are now on Facebook. Find us there at Facebook.com slash this is TTRL. So basically everything at TTRL at this is TTRL. That's how you find us. This is TTRL all across the board. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Because social media was part of our degree and we know to keep our branding the same and consistent. Indeed. Indeed. So, um, and again, hit us up if you have stuff you want to tell us or if you have questions for us. And otherwise, have a fantastic week. Peace.